In this video, we're going to discuss the Gabriel synthesis. This is the second type of making amino acid that you need to know for the MCAT. So the way Gabriel synthesis works is it makes an amino acid using n thalaminomelonic ester and an alkyl halide. Now, this is the structure of n thalaminomelonic ester. When you look at this compound, you can actually see there are several features that look similar to an amino acid. You have this nitrogen with this protecting group on it. The reason why protecting groups are important is that an amino acid has both an amine as well as a carboxylic acid. These groups can participate in acid-base reactions, and that usually makes it hard to synthesize the different amino acids. So by putting protecting groups on the amine, you prevent the amine group from reacting as an acid or a base. And same thing, the carboxylic acid, you can see that they're in their ester forms, again, to prevent acid-base reactions. So starting with this n thalaminomelonic ester, the first thing you're going to want to do is add a base. So here, sodium ethoxide, this is a strong base. Now, the reason why you want to add a base is, of course, there's a proton that you want to remove in your molecule. If you look at the n thalaminomelonic ester, you notice that this hydrogen is attached to a carbon. This carbon is alpha to two different carbonyl groups. As a result, this hydrogen is slightly acidic. So that's the first step. Your base is going to remove this hydrogen. And when it removes the hydrogen, you're going to form this enolate, this carbon with a full negative charge. This carbon with a full negative charge can act as a nucleophile. And in this step, you're going to go ahead and introduce your alkyl halide. Now, again, this alkyl halide is going to be important for determining the amino acid that you make. And that's because the choice of the alkyl halide determines the side chain. So if you take a look at this molecule, this alkyl halide right here, you should note that this is the side chain of valine. So that means here we're trying to make the amino acid valine. Now, when you have this nucleophile in this alkyl halide, it should remind you of a reaction that we've discussed before, a nucleophilic substitution reaction. Essentially, this nucleophile is going to attack this carbon, kicking off the bromine. And this mechanism right here is an SN2 reaction, a one concerted step. So once this nucleophile attacks, then you'll have added your side chain onto your molecule. So the next step that we're going to do is step three, hydrolysis. So under acidic conditions, the protecting group on the nitrogen will get hydrolyzed, so you'll have the amino group back, and the esters will get hydrolyzed into carboxylic acids. So now this is starting to look pretty close to an amino acid. You've got several of the key components. The problem here, though, is we have two carboxylic acids. However, here, if you look at the carboxylic acids, you notice that they are beta to each other. Right, this carboxylic acid, this carbon is the carboxylic acid carbon. One carbon away is the alpha carbon. The next carbon would be the beta carbon. So since these carboxylic acids are beta to each other, it's possible for you to add heat and produce decarboxylation. So that's our last step. Decarboxylation. So as a result of decarboxylation, it means that one of the products that we're going to form is, of course, carbon dioxide. But this, of course, is not the main product we're trying to form, but it is important to note that when we lose the carbon dioxide, we're left with a hydrogen. So this hydrogen gives us all four components of our amino acid. So here we have successfully synthesized valine. And that's how the Gabriel synthesis works.